we are going to take a look at what's called the PERC RAID controller. And I'm going to walk you through and under, help you understand and have get a better understanding of how to use a typical Dell. And, and PERC means Power Edge RAID controller. So this is a very common controller with Dell servers. So I want to get you started in understanding what they're about. So let's, let's take, we've got a nice Dell server here. And this is a 2600. And it's got sets of physical drives. You can see them up here. So we have uh, zero, disk 0, 1, 2. And then down here we have another uh, round of physical disks. And this is disk 3, 4, and 5. We have six drives, but they start with the, letter, the number 0. And you can see the number down here. So when we go into the PERT controller, the rate controller that manages all that, we'll understand that it does start at at zero and it counts down such as that. I want to talk first about three things as we look at arrays. We're going to look at, uh, as we look at array controllers, and we're looking at more of the professional ones here, uh, we are going to look at three basic things. We're going to look at arrays, and this is going to help us organize physical disks. So the way that array controllers work is they always want to build an array. So, and basically an array is taking physical disks and organizing them. Uh, an array can be one disk, it can be two disks, it can be three disks, it can be 25 disks. But in order for a array controller, a professional array controller to handle disks, it must begin by organizing the physical disks into arrays. And you can look up here on our screen and I have on disk, on uh, this slot zero, this physical disk zero, I have it into an array. It's all by itself. One disk is in one array. And you can tell it by the array number. This is the array zero, zero. And if there were more than one physical disk, uh, it would be zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three. But they would all begin with the same array number. Notice down below I have a different array number. I have array 01. And I have another array 01 and another array 01. So these three physical disks are in the same array number. So back to our discussion. We have physical disks, obviously. And we're always going to take physical disks and put them into an array. That array could be one physical disk. It could be two physical disks. It could be three. Now, what are logical disks? Logical disks are what is necessary for the operating system to see in order for the operating system to function with the disks, they must be created into logical disks. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to take physical disks, put them into arrays, and then from the arrays we're going to create a logical disk, and we're going to see this in the steps, and the logical disk is what is going to be seen by the operating system. So these are the three concepts you must have and understand as we go forward with a RAID controller. We're always going to have physical disks, but they must be put into arrays and that allows the RAID controller to organize disks. After they're put into an array, we must create a logical disk. For example, let's come up here. Here I have one physical disk, it's on disk, this physical disk is disk zero. It's in one array, A00, and there's only one disk in that array. When I finish with this process, I need to create a logical disk, and that logical disk is what Windows, the operating system, will actually see and understand. Now right below it, I have three physical disks. They are all in one array, array 01. You can see it. Each physical disk is in the same array. These three physical disks are going to eventually end up into becoming one logical disk to the operating system. So my operating system, when I boot up, is going to see one logical disk and a second logical disk. The second logical disk is actually made up of three physical 
one array, three physical, one logic. So kind of get that into your brain because that is what is going to happen as we deal with RAID arrays of, of any kind. Many, many uh, servers. This is a Dell 2600 PowerEdge. And you can see it's a very complicated server. We've got the side panel open. You can look inside. Most servers, <clears throat> whether they're HP, IBM, or Dell, are going to come with a built-in SCSI controller. That's going to be pretty much the standard. It's up to you as you choose components for your server whether you add RAID as an additional feature you want. This particular server has hot swappable bays. All this front panel here is hot swappable. This is SCSI, uh, the old three and a half inch SCSI arrays, uh, hot swappable. It's got a RAID controller back there and it's got the built-in motherboard SCSI controller. So you're going to see a lot of this on your system as you boot up. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and I want you to notice that on this particular uh, Dell server, we have two channels. We have a RAID controller channel and we have a SCSI. So be aware that indicates that this array software is, a, is aware of both the SCSI controller as well as the RAID controller. So I'm going to reboot the machine and let's take a look at BIOS as it boots up. We'll take a look at the controllers as they come up. All right, I'm kicking on the Dell server. You can watch the screen and watch the BIOS come up. As the BIOS detects RAID controllers, SCSI controllers, you're going to begin to see it come up on the screen. And I'll kind of zoom in here a little bit, see if we can catch it. We're going to watch for the, control, the keystrokes that allow us to access the different types of processor. So here's the RAID controller, so it's control M. So I'm going to hit a control M. And we're in the RAID controller firmware, the software. And this is where we're going to do a lot of the configuration that we're going to do. Uh, you notice that we have a management menu. Uh, we're going to be looking at configuring, initializing, objects, clear, rebuild, check consistency, and reconstruct. And as you do that, here at the bottom, as you click on each of these menu items, down here at the bottom, you're going to see a brief description of what that menu option is. So under the configure, as we get into the RAID controller, uh, under the configure, we're going to be able to configure logical drives. So we're going to hit enter, and notice we, we're jumped to a new menu. And I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit as much as I can without getting uh, losing my clarity here. I'm going to zoom in, and so let's talk about each one of these one at a time. As we begin to look at the configuration options, we have easy configuration, new configuration, view and add configuration, clear, which is pretty straightforward. You're going to clear any configuration data on the array. So if you want to wipe out everything on your array, you just go to clear and it wipes it out. Then there's a specified boot drive if you're going to boot to the array. In the easy configuration, there are three basic configuration options, easy, new, and add view. Easy configuration, when you choose it, will do everything that the other ones will do, except it will not disturb existing configuration information. So if you've already done a RAID array, it's not going to disturb the existing configuration. This, when you choose the new configuration, this one is very dangerous because it will wipe out all existing RAID configuration. You want to use this one very, only when you are starting with a blank array. Nothing is on the hard drive, nothing is there, nothing is configured. That is the only time you use the new. So as a student, you would never use the new because we already have one array and that is a C drive for the operating system. So you can always choose the easy to configure your RAID array or the add view configuration option. So these two are the only ones you're going to choose. If you choose the new, you're going to wipe out your C drive and you're going to have to reinstall the operating system. So watch out, be very careful, understand the differences. They all do basically the same thing this one will save. It's got some options. This one allows you just to view what you have and you can go ahead and add another array. But if you choose new, 
you will be adding a new operating system because you're going to wipe out everything on the array. So be very careful with that. When you create a new array, and you've created a new logical drive in the array, you'll typically want to come and initialize it, and that will prepare it for the operating system. So that's what the initialization option is. Under the objects menu, we're going to hit enter, and you can see that you can look at the adapter. You can look at the adapter parameters. This is where you can actually delete your logical drive. Let's say you created your array, a RAID 5, and now you want to clean it up and leave it fresh for the next student. You would actually go here and choose F5, the logical drive. We would, have, we, we would never want to delete logical drive 0 because that's C drive. Let's go down to logical drive zero, 1, which is our RAID 5 array that we just built. Delete key down here. I'll scroll down here and you can see. Uh, when I hit F5, I can just highlight that drive, hit the delete, and I can wipe out that logical array. So that is a way to clean up any arrays that you build when you're done. Just do not mess with logical drive zero. That's your C drive. That's your operating system. You'll wipe it out. So if you make that choice, you're going to reinstall the operating system. You can also do things like uh, go back here, you can look at physical disks, the channel, battery information. So these are the various objects in array, the adapter itself, logical drives, physical drives, channel, battery information, etc. If you want to clear a disk, that basically that's what we call a low-level format. You can wipe out, uh, clean off a disk. That's usually not necessary. Just deleting the logical drive is fine. This allows you to rebuild a physical disk. If you have a broken array, a RAID 5, and you lost one of the RAID 5 drives, you would use this, this menu option to rebuild that RAID 5 array. This allows you to check the consistency of an array. Let's say you have an array 5 and you're concerned about it. This will allow you to look at the consistency of it. If you're going to go from one RAID to another RAID, you would do a reconstruct. We won't really go into that, but that's what that option is about. So let's go ahead and build an array. Let's look at the existing arrays. We'll choose some physical disks and we'll build our logical drive. So we're going to hit enter. We're going to use the add or the view add configuration option. And if you'll notice at the bottom, it's scanning all the drives. And there we have, because I already went ahead right while you watched and I deleted the, that existing array that we had. We do not want to delete this one because that's going to be your C drive. That's got your operating system on it. And notice I chose the, the view add configuration option. I never chose the new configuration option because that would have wiped out all the configuration information on that array. And that would have meant you would have had to reinstall the operating system, which would take quite a bit of time. So I chose the view add configuration option and now I can view and I can add. So I've got a number of hard drives ready. These are physical disks that are ready. They represent these disks here on the side of the uh, Dell controller. So these disks here are being represented by what you see in this menu. So I've got disk 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all ready to be created as an array. Now to do it, you just simply follow the menus down here. We've got some basic menus that say space uh, for select, enter, array, end array, F10 to configure, and you can see the menus and that's basically what you're going to be doing. So if you want to look at drive information, logical drive information, all that information is at the bottom of your screen. So I'm going to come up here again and I'm going to hit spacebar and notice it creates an array number. It also assigns that disk a disk number. I'm going to come down to the next disk, hit space, excuse me. Notice it again assigns it the same array number as the one above because these both are in one array. That's the way I'm doing it. So I'm going to put three disks and notice right now I have three disks in one array and they're each given uh, a disk number, disk 0, disk 1, disk 2, but notice that their array number is the same. So three disks, three physical disks in one array and we are going to, out of that, create one logical disk. So let's hit enter to end the array. 
I'm going to hit F10. And again, I'm just following these menus down here at the bottom. I'm going to hit F10 to configure what I just now selected. So I'm going to hit F10. And it says, uh, now it says select the configuration. And I'm going to hit space bar and I'm going to use the span one. That's typically what you're going to use. And we're going to then uh, hit F10 to configure. And now it pops up with some, some logical drive stuff. So now, look up here, I've created an array. I've chosen three physical disks to be a part of this array. Now it is assigned it as a logical disk. I've, I'm going to go ahead down here at the bottom. I have the option of choosing RAID 5. Here's the size of the array. I have some advanced menus. I can choose different kinds of advanced RAID concepts. Uh, down here I can accept this configuration and this will create a logical drive 1. I already have logical drive 0. Remember the operating system wants to see a logical drive. So I have a logical drive 0 and that's where my operating system is on. I just created a RAID 5 array and it's now going to be logical drive 1. So I have two logical drives, 0 and 1. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to scroll down with my, my uh, down arrows and I'm going to accept all these settings. And so now I have two arrays and two logical drives. This is one array with one physical disk and it, that's the array number. This is also three physical disks in one array and this will be logical drive one. This will be logical drive zero. I know that's very confusing, but you've got to come to grips and understand the, the arrays, logical drives, and the physical disks. Remember, your operating system wants to see logical drives. Okay, so we have that now. So now let's boot up in the operating system and go take a